the book tends to have a different meaning depending on the reader. It, de it depends how old they are. Um, and I feel like similarly, the movie will be taken differently depending on what lens you watch the film through. When you watch the movie, what do you see it as? I watch it through the eyes of a child because we made it for children, we made it for kids, young people. So I had to, for two years, try to put myself in that mindset. And it's a great place to be because mm -hmm. everything is light-filled and joyful and black girl magic. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just fun, you know? If you go into the film ready for kind of the way we used to feel when we watched Never Ending Story or Escape to Witch Mountain or some of those good, good old films, um, you'll get a little treat. If you go in thinking you're gonna get Citizen Kane or like, you know, I don't know, no, uh, Interstellar, it's not that. It's a light, lovely fantasy about a girl who saves the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I look at it the same way. I look at it seeing myself portray and tell Meg's story um, and seeing her journey and seeing her grow. And I just, I look at it with a whole bunch of happiness and gratefulness and joy. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that this is adapted from a book which was initially rejected by 26 publishers because it was too different at the time and having a female protagonist was very uncommon. What does it mean for our culture today? Well, you know, not only was the ban was the book uh, rejected by publishers, but once it was published, it, it was banned by many libraries and many schools. Um, so this was written by a woman, a radical woman, back in the 60s. And the fact that we're still grappling with the same ideas of, you know, girls and women in key roles and women behind the camera and women in government and just women in safety in general in the workplace and at home, uh, these are things we have to keep talking about. And so, you know, any piece of art, any piece of cinema that can further that conversation, especially for, among young people, uh, becomes really important to look at. Well, especially with, with a film like this and a film like Black Panther, I just feel like it's so awesome now that we're not looking at it like, oh, this is a different type of film. Like, it just seems normal to me now yeah. when I watch it. It doesn't seem like anything different than yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah, good, good. Well, then we're making some progress. Yes, and I know that having a diverse cast was very important to you. Yes, yes. Well, an inclusive cast, it started with Storm Reid as Meg Murray, a, a, a heroine in the book who uh, is not uh, of color in the book, and so bring that into the world of Wrinkle in Time. And then the misses, they look like a three misses doubtfires <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the book. And so to make them these, you know, fantastic, fantastic women of different sizes, shapes, ages, cultures, backgrounds was a big part of it, but also our crew, the very people who put their hands to mold and, and create a film that you don't see, that don't get the spotlight. Mm -hmm. um, they all, it looked like the United Nations. Yes. It's really and great. I, and I feel like Meg Murray is an amazing role model for younger girls today. Mm, yes, that, that's what Meg is. I mean, even though she's going through her own challenges, she becomes the light and embraces her light to help save the world. So I feel like that message will help inspire other young girls and just other people to know that they could do whatever they want to do, um, even though they have faults. Made in Hollywood. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. We want to know, what would you have asked? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And as always, for more videos like this, hit the MIH TV logo right here. And for the next awesome video, click right there.